I'm Amy Pearl from Work Ignited, and I often get questions about assessments. Things like, what tools should I use for team building? How do I go about choosing a candidate selection assessment? What are the best tools that are out there? My answer is always the same. It depends. It depends on what you're trying to achieve. It depends on your budget. It depends if you've done things like this before and how open your team is to doing these things going forward. I've created this two-part video series to help you to think about these questions. Thanks for joining me. Seventy-six percent of organizations are now using assessments for one purpose or another. That includes candidate screening, onboarding, training, team and individual development, career guidance, and even organizational analytics. They know that better people data yields better business results. We've organized this two-part video series into 10 questions that you can use to clarify your needs and your next steps for your assessment programs. You can also visit the Assessment Solutions page of our website to download our Assessments Made Easy eBook. So let's dive in. The first question I want you to consider is what are your goals or reasons for using assessments? In essence, what are you trying to discover? Let's start with a basic illustration. I believe that people are like icebergs. Usually only about 15% of an iceberg is over the surface of the water. The rest is what lies beneath. The same is true with a person. What you see every day is someone's behaviors, how they show up to work every day. Are they outgoing or are they more reserved? Do they pay attention to details or do they love to work on strategy? You see how they behave in the office. But what you might not realize is beneath the surface, there's a whole lot of things that are driving those behaviors. For example, someone's past experiences. Let me give you an illustration. Let's pretend that someone learned to be a barista at Starbucks. And they were successful there, but then they decided that they wanted to move on and work in the drive through at a Dunkin' Donuts. Some of the behaviors that they developed at Starbucks are going to transfer perfectly over to Dunkin' Donuts. But in the drive through some of the things that they did at the, as the barista at Starbucks aren't just not going to work. So what you need to consider is that past experiences will drive how people behave at work today. Drilling deeper is emotional intelligence. In my mind, emotional intelligence is how well do I know myself, how well do I read others, and do I use that information to build good relationships with them. Some people have a lot of emotional intelligence. Some don't. Doesn't make them bad people, but they are going to behave differently at work. Going a little deeper are your critical thinking skills. Not quite IQ, um, more like how do you solve problems. Can you draw reasonable inferences when you're given information? Can you separate the difference between an assumption and a fact? Some people have very strong critical thinking skills. Others don't. Again, it doesn't make them bad people. They're just going to behave differently on the job. Deeper are your values, your beliefs that you bring to the table and demonstrate throughout the day. Many of us are develop developed our values at a very young age, and they stay with us throughout our lives. And at the base of our iceberg is personality, sort of like your personal DNA, the traits that make you tick. And there's a lot of research that now shows that about two-thirds of your personality is actually inherited. The rest typically develops through your upbringing, your education, and your very early work experiences. So by the time you're about 30 years old, your personality is pretty firmly established. Now, of course, we all know someone who has had a major life event that changes their personality, but usually that accounts for a very small percentage. It's important when you're considering assessments to think about what you're trying to measure because when the sun shines on the iceberg and the waves lap against it, the top is going to shift and change, much like your behaviors can change in certain situations. But the base, what's at your core, where the sun doesn't shine, that stays more consistent over time. And one thing you want to make sure is that when you're working with people in the workplace, the day-to-day -day behaviors that they're expected to demonstrate should really be aligned with what's at their core so they can be most successful and fulfilled by what they're doing. Various assessment tools measure these different attributes. To get the biggest bang for your buck, I'd find a tool that covers a lot of ground. 
Using the same tool to reveal different things about individuals really helps to embed the assessment's language in your organization and gives you a better return on your investment. So know what you're looking for. Our Work Ignited website has more information about specific assessments that measure each of these attributes. And we'll include more assessment specific videos on this YouTube channel. Question number two. Will I be using assessments for hiring? Many hiring mistakes can be avoided by adding assessments to the process. We recommend that you assess just your top candidates before the reference checks and of course your final interviews. This way you can tailor your questions based on the assessment results. Many assessment publishers will not support a tool for use in the hiring process. You wouldn't want to find this out after somebody accuses you of inappropriate hiring practices, so be sure to check with your legal counsel. Some distributors might tell you that a tool can be used for candidate selection without the publisher's permission, so make sure you do your homework. Also, keep in mind that even if you're not using the assessments for candidate screening today, organizations often migrate to this use over time. So, you know, once you have data for a group, it's only logical to use that data to understand hiring needs and to use the same assessment tool to screen future candidates. So plan for the long term. If you think that you might be using a tool for candidate screening someday, even if you're not using it today, I would plan for that now. Question number three. What statistical analysis is behind the tool? Research techniques are used to ensure an assessment measures the characteristics that it claims to measure. Is the assessment reliable in that the results are reproducible and consistent over time and valid in that it predicts what it claims to predict much of the time? Nothing is 100% perfect. Be advised that typically validity and reliability come with a longer questionnaire and at a higher price point. This might be important when making major decisions such as those involved with candidate selection or succession planning. Lighter tools may not have the same statistical depth but their simplicity and cost effectiveness might be perfect for supervisory training or team building. I have some general rules of thumb that guide my decisions about what types of tools to use when. If the company hasn't used assessments very much and if they most likely are looking to use them just for a specific training or development initiative, I would go with something simple, like a basic four-factor model like DISC. If an organization has already invested in an assessment tool, and it's something that I'm entitled to use, I'll start there. Why teach them a whole new language if they already paid for a lot of data with another tool? If an organization is interested in embedding a tool in their organization for multiple purposes, like candidate screening, team development, and coaching, I'll use something that has multiple applications, like PXT Select. Let's move on to question four. What are the certification requirements? Based on a commitment to accurate and ethical assessments of individuals, providers use qualification systems to help ensure that the right tools are in the right hands. The most sophisticated assessments require a high level of expertise in test interpretation and therefore require licensure to practice in your state or in a field related to the assessment tool. Some even require a doctorate degree in psychology, education, or a closely related field with evidence of formal training in psychometric tools. Others require that you complete a certification program that's hosted by the assessment publisher or one of their distributors. Most reputable organizations now offer online certification programs to save you time. Other tools have no specific qualifications for purchase. Perhaps you're already certified to use an assessment, but you're thinking of using a different tool. Some assessment providers will qualify you to administer their assessments based on your education, experience, or other qualifications. However, this doesn't always come with any formal training. Effective assessment users tap into the training and support provided by their vendors, and they also network with other certified professionals to broaden their knowledge, to develop their skills, and to ensure that they're getting the most from their toolkit. Question number five. What legal issues should be considered? We're not lawyers, nor do we provide legal advice, but I would always encourage you to make sure the assessment you're considering complies with industry guidelines and employment laws. For example, in the United States, the Department of Labor has specific guidelines for using assessments to support hiring decisions. Speak with your attorney and be sure to understand the regulations of your local and national agencies before diving into the assessment process. 
I hope we've given you some good food for thought as you think about your goals or reasons for using assessments, how assessments might fit into your hiring process, the reliability and validity of the tools you're evaluating, how you can get certified to use an assessment, and how you'll look into the legal issues associated with assessment usage in your part of the world. And don't forget, you can download this content in an ebook by visiting assess the Assessment Solutions page of our website, which is www.workignited.com. I'll cover five additional questions that you should consider when choosing your assessments in part two of this video series. So keep watching to ignite your workplace.